Hey there, interactive developers. Jack Delora here with the Interactive and Immersive HQ. In this video, we're going to take a look at building a simple particle system that is generated from a noise texture in Notch. So this tutorial is aimed at people who are new to Notch and maybe have some experience with Touch Designer or similar platforms and maybe already have an idea of a uh, sort of typical particle system based effect that they are looking to create. We're going to walk through the steps of setting that up and generating this particle based effect that you see on screen. OK, so we're going to go ahead and start with a blank project, which we're going to give a name. I'm just going to call this uh, particles demo. We want to set up some properties before we begin. Um, we do not need ray tracing enabled. We do want to turn on what's called deferred rendering as well as high dynamic range. Everything else we can leave as it is. And then I'll hit OK. So I'm going to kind of resize things a little bit here so that we have uh, plenty of room to see the settings that will change and um, a preview of our output. I'm also just going to turn on this resource browser to kind of move those settings a little bit in from the edge. So we've got our empty node graph here. And the first thing that we're going to do to begin uh, is to set up a camera and a light. So we're going to use what's called an orbit camera, which will allow us to orbit around the center of our scene in a very simple way. Um, and we're not going to actually modify any of the uh, positional settings for this one. I'm just going to go ahead and connect it to the root node by hitting Control R on the keyboard. And then I'm going to add a post effect after the camera, which is called uh, temporal anti-aliasing. That'll kind of smooth out the final image from the camera a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and place that to the right of the orbit camera and parent it to the orbit camera. Now, if we want to actually look through this camera in our viewer up here, we have to select one of our scene camera options. Um, I'm going to select scene camera one, which you can see is right next to the orbit view setting that we currently have selected. And now we're looking through the camera, but we don't have anything in our scene to look at. So it's just black. That's OK. Uh, after that, we're just going to add a directional light. So we've got some kind of lighting in our scene. And again, we're just going to connect that directly to the node graph by hitting Control R and not worry about any of the settings. After that, we're going to start building our particle system portion of the network. So to begin, we need a particle root node. So I'm going to search for particle uh, over here in the node section of the window. And I want the particle root operator. So I'm going to add that to the network. This also needs to be connected to the root. So I'll hit Control R again there. And then we need a uh, an additional operator to actually emit these particles, uh, you know, and start that particle system functioning. So what I'm going to do is grab uh, an emitter that's called an image emitter. Now you'll notice that there's an image emitter for fields. And then if we scroll down, there is also one under the particles category. Make sure you grab the one for particle systems. So I'll place that to the right of our particle root node. I need to connect uh, this to the particle root node. And actually, you can use that same shortcut of Control R, which will connect this type of node to the particular corresponding root node that goes with it. So we have an image emitter, um, which is currently uh, got some red bars across it telling us that it is uh, not functional and needs some more uh, additional operators. And that would be the video node, which is a required component of this operator. So the way that we're going to approach um, that, we basically need an image, which is then going to generate particles for us on screen. We're going to use noise, as I talked about in the beginning. Um, and we have to begin, actually, by defining a color ramp to add some colors to our noise. So I've added the color ramp over here to the left. Um, we're going to be building in this uh, direction over here to the right. So we might even have to scoot some of this over just to make space um, for any additional operators. But anyways, back to the color ramp. 
we are going to define a number of different colors in this operator, which will make a nice gradient, which we can use to add color to noise in a moment. So what I'm going to do here is just um, adjust the total number of colors here to three. So you'll change the number of control points to three. And then uh, we can preview this in the viewport. Right now we just have three um, colors. Our three colors are set to white, so we don't really even have a gradient at the moment. But if we then come in and modify the colors that we have here, we can get uh, you know a little bit more of a gradient on screen. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is just set these to something close to red, green, and blue. We're going to use an additional effect later on to shift through uh, colors in between. It'll be like a hue shift effect. So don't worry too much about these being kind of standard basic colors, but also feel free to choose any colors that you like. You don't have to stop at three. You can keep adding to your heart's content, um, but I'm just going to stick with these three for now. So you can see here we have our gradient and that's looking good. Um, what I'm going to do then is attach this color ramp to what's called a fractal noise generator. So uh, one thing that we have to do is actually turn off the display of this color ramp, which we can do by hitting control F2, which will take us back to our camera view. And then if I hit control F2 again, one, I've got the fractal noise operator selected. You can see that we can now see the output of that operator on uh, within our viewer here. So right now it is a, uh, you know, grayscale texture, which um, will animate if we hit the space bar and um, play our uh, timeline, which is kind of cool. But um, we can add color to this by taking the um, output of our color ramp and sending it into the color ramp input of the fractal noise. You can see then that will start generating a cool uh, colorized version of that noise for us, which we can then, you know, manipulate in a number of ways. So that's looking good. Um, however, I want to um, adjust this noise operator so that we can get uh, something a little bit more interesting. So the first thing that I'm going to adjust is this update time mode setting, which we are going to change to running and loopable. What that means is that when our timeline loops back to zero, uh, we will not see a noticeable stutter or uh, resetting of this um, fractal noise texture when the timeline loops. So when we have it in this loopable mode, it'll just infinitely generate smoothly and we won't have any of those abrupt changes. Now, the other thing I want to modify is this noise type, which we can set to a number of different things. I'm going to choose the option here called flow. And that'll give us this really cool distorted uh, noise texture that, again, looks pretty cool. But feel free to experiment with any of these additional noise types. They will give you, again, some interesting textures that you can then generate your particles with and experiment with. So that is uh, pretty much everything we're going to do within this operator. We're not going to then directly connect it to our particle emitter. Instead, we're going to use a null. We're going to use what's called a video null. So I'm going to add that video null to the network. I'm going to connect the output of the fractal noise to the input of the video null. And then what we can do is move our um, image emitter to the right. I can connect the output of the video null into the first input on the image emitter, which you'll see says video node. and that is now uh, being used as the texture to emit our particles. Now, if I come back to fractal noise and turn off the display in the viewer, we're still not going to see anything because we have not connected this to any uh, 3D geometry. Um, however, one thing that I want to do with this, uh, or the reason that we've added this video null, is if we preview the output, we'll see right now we have the exact same texture that we saw in the fractal noise. We can actually use some post effects to change how this texture looks. So what I'm going to do here is add in the color correction node. Oops. And that is color with a U for all of our American viewers. Uh, we want the color connection, color correction post effects node. And I can connect that directly to this video null. 
And then if we were to modify some of the parameters within this operator, for example, the hue, you can see that I can then color shift that texture. Now, of course, you could do something like set up a number of um, different modifiers to change the color ramp itself, but this provides us with a super easy way of uh, directly manipulating the hue without having to get into conversions between uh, HSV and RGB color values. So what I want this to do is to color shift over time to give us a uh, texture that's a little bit more interesting and less static. I mean, it does have movement, but I want to have some color shifting going on. So to do that, I'm going to use what's called the continuous modifier. Now, for those of us who are familiar with Touch Designer, this is somewhat similar to something like ABS time.seconds, where it's just a value that can increase indefinitely and is often used for things like rotation. And uh, hue is one of those values that um, usually has a degree value associated with it, zero to 360. And we can use this type of rotation uh, modifier to have it uh, infinitely cycle through all of the available hues. So for this uh, continuous modifier, I'm just going to change the speed value here to 0 0.25 so that it increases at a little bit of a slower rate. And as soon as we connect this to our color correction operator, it will start outputting a value. Now, I don't want to connect it to this um, effect amount image uh, input on our color correction operator. I actually want this to modify the hue parameter specifically. So I'm just going to click on the color correction operator, head up to the properties panel, and then drag the output of the continuous modifier onto the hue parameter. You'll see that that then uh, makes a connection for us. And what we should see is that the color of our texture should slowly shift over time. So that is looking good, and we can now continue on with our particle system. So um, to actually display or see the outcome of this uh, particle, uh, or rather the image emitter on the system of particles that we're setting up, we're gonna go ahead and add a cloner and some 3D geometry so that again, we can see those things happening. So what I'm gonna do first of all is to turn off this preview that we have displaying in our viewer by heading back to the video null, video null two operator that is and hitting control F2. Then what we're going to do is use the cloner to generate copies of some 3D geometry. The particle system is going to provide the position and color parameters for those pieces of geometry. So I'm gonna use a specific type of cloner called the um, clone to particles operator. We'll add that into the network. I need to connect that to the root node, so I'll hit control R. Then I want to um, also connect the first input here, which says particles node to our particle root node. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect that right now. And once we then connect a uh, shape 3D operator to this, we should see some particle or rather some 3D geometry moving around on screen. So I'm gonna grab the shape 3D geometry object and add that to the network. I'll connect the output of clone to particles to, or uh, rather parent the shape 3D to that clone to particles object. And then we should see some spheres appearing on screen. Now we have a couple of settings that we need to modify to end up with the composition that we saw at the beginning. We're going to start off in the clone to particles operator, and then we're going to move on to these uh, particle operators that we added earlier. So within clone to particles, uh, we have a number of things to adjust. First of all, we can adjust the number of total clones that we see on screen. Now, right now we're just generating five clones, which you know is not uh, super interesting. I'm going to increase this to a value of 10,000 which then has created a, a solid square at the center of the screen. Uh, not ideal, but we're going to make some additional adjustments to correct for that. Then I'm gonna head to clone scale, which will adjust the size of the shape 3D spheres that we have on screen. I'm gonna set that to a value of 0 0.1. Now you can see immediately we have something that looks uh, you know, a little bit more 
uh, noisy, but um, definitely more defined and less blobby than what we saw a second ago. I'm going to adjust the size randomness parameter to 0.2 to give a little bit of randomness in the size of those spheres. And then we're going to continue on to the particle max age parameter, which again, that's going to set the maximum age that those particles will live to before they die. I'm gonna set that to three and hit enter. That will allow them to exist on screen for a little bit longer. And that is actually it for that particular operator. Now let's head back to the image emitter. As we talked about earlier, this is taking the fractal noise texture and actually generating all of the particles based on that texture. Now we might have noticed that our uh, final outcome here is rather small and that actually has to do with the scale settings in our image emitter. We can adjust those in order to have this fill up a little bit more of our screen. So I'm going to set the scale X and Y here to three. And you can then see that we now have particles, uh, you know, covering more of the screen, but not quite going off the edge of the screen yet. Now you might've noticed that our particles are all white and we don't have any of that cool noise texture uh, color scheme applied to them. We're actually going to use something called an image effector to apply the colors to our particles. But before we do that, I do want to point out that you could use the colors that are generated by our particle system by heading over to the cloned particles operator and then heading or, or rather checking the color clones box here. You can see then that we have the colors of that texture applied nicely to the particles on screen. In this case, we're gonna use the image effector instead because it gives us a little bit different of an outcome and uh, I thought looks a little bit cooler for the final um, effect. So I'm gonna turn that color clones option back to off and then we'll add the image effector operator. So let's go ahead and drag that into our network. Now, normally you might use this to use the um, image texture to modify something like the position values of the particles. We're just going to use this to apply color to our uh, particles that we're generating. So the first thing I need to do here is to take a, a texture into this image effector. Otherwise it has no image to work with. So I'm gonna take the output of the video null and uh, send that into this first input here that says image node. Then I'm going to take the output of the image effector and drag that into the effectors input of the clone to particles node. Now it's looking a little bit funky right now. And that's because our um, texture that we're applying to our particles has not been scaled in the way that our um, image that generates those particles has been scaled. So effectively, our uh, texturing of the particles is still happening at the original scale and then it is using a, an extend mode to deal with all of the particles outside of that boundary. So the way that we can correct for this is to head back into the image effector and then I'm going to change the scale X and Y parameters here to three matching the image emitter scale settings that we set up earlier. So you might have also noticed that the movement of the particles on screen is, uh, you know, not really all that interesting either. They kind of stay in the position that they're spawned in and don't really move anywhere else. We can add something like a turbulence effector to add some more interesting movement to those particles. So I'm going to go ahead and type in that in our uh, node viewer on the right and grab the turbulence effector from the particles category. This can be correct, uh, connected directly to the particle root node by hitting control R again. And then we can immediately see that we have something that looks a little bit more interesting. Now I want to go ahead and adjust some parameters here as well. I'm going to set the spread angle here to something like 100. Um, I'm going to set the randomness to 0.55. And that will actually be it for this particular operator. So now all that we have left to do is to add some post effects to make our visual output look a little bit more snazzy. So what I'm gonna do here is add a frame feedback effect, first of all, which will generate some 
uh, feedback on top of our image. I'm going to connect that directly to the root node and place it uh, kind of in the center here, right underneath that root node. Now remember when we're applying these effects that the uh, physical location of the operator does matter. So any uh, effect that you want to appear or be applied earlier in the chain, you would place above the frame feedback node um, or anything you want to be applied after that, you would place below it. So within the frame feedback node, I'm just going to make two quick changes. I want to set the uh, previous frame feedback here to a very specific value of 0 0.9975, which has made our screen go black. But after we set the previous frame blend mode to max, we should then see that uh, reappear on screen. And that'll give us this kind of nice washy painterly effect. Um, another thing that we can do within this operator to add some interest is to increase the or increase or decrease the feedback scale, which will then add a uh, sort of uh, tunneling or uh, pulling towards us kind of effect to the feedback. So I'm going to set the feedback scale X and Y to 0 0.9995. And again, that's going to be the same for both of these operators. You'll note that when working with feedback, the um, the increments that we're working with tend to be very, very small. Uh, anything above that will have a very dramatic effect on the outcome. Definitely play around with those parameters though, because you can get a lot of interesting results. But you can see that immediately this has given us uh, less of a hard edged boundary and uh, sort of a, an interesting glowing trailing effect. Now you can make that more extreme by um, decreasing the number here to something like 0 0.999. And you can see that the trailing is now being pulled uh, further out. That is sort of up to your own particular taste. So go ahead and play around with those as much as you like. Um, the final effect that I added here was a very common one to work with in Notch, and that is the glow effect. So I'm going to add that. Uh, at the end of my chain here. And this one obviously needs a little bit of reining in because it is totally blowing out our uh, final uh, effect here. So I'm going to change this intensity value to 0. Point, um, oops, 0. 0.05, which just gives us a subtle glow and kind of brightens up everything within our uh, screen. So that is actually it for this video. Um, I wanted to, before we close, just point out a couple of places that you can continue, uh, take this technique a little bit further and start to explore within Notch. One additional post effect that works particularly well with the effect that we have created here is called Motion Data Mosh. And that is a um, stylization post effect that gives a, a cool, um, glitchy effect to the final video feed. Now this will need some adjustments in order to uh, not just look like this. Um, and that will start with this velocity scale parameter, which I'm going to set to one. Um, the hold time is the amount of time that we're in this kind of glitch state where things are moving around. I'm going to set that to five. I'm going to set the velocity update rate to 10. And then most importantly, I want to use the motion vectors from my scene. What that's going to do uh, once this clears out again is it will take the motion vectors from those particles and use them to push these glitchy uh, pixels around on screen. And again, works really well with this because we've actually got so many different components moving on screen. So that'll enhance this uh, painterly effect that we have already been working towards. Another thing that I wanted to point out is that we don't have to use the fractal noise operator to generate the positions of our particles. Since this is an image emitter, uh, you can connect any kind of image you want. That includes your webcam or video files or anything else that you can generate within Notch. So definitely play around with different uh, texture generation options and see how that impacts your final outcome. 
Uh, with that, we're going to close out the video. Hope that you have had fun putting this together and this has given you a little bit more of an idea of uh, some of the possibilities within Notch that only require a few operators, especially for those of you who um, are kind of taking your first steps into the world of Notch. So with that, looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.